Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our small business development workshop, Increasing Your Diversity by Hiring Individuals with a Disability. The Duluth Chamber is very grateful to provide this offering free of charge to our chamber members because of the generosity of our sponsor, the Lake Spear College. LSE has been instrumental in allowing us to continue to bring these educational offerings to our members to help you grow your business. So thank you so much for being here. Um, but without further ado, I have the pleasure of introducing to you two speakers for today. We have Bruce Bach and Marcy Jasper. Both Bruce and Marcy serve in placement for Vocational Rehabilitation Services of Duluth. Now, VRS aims to prepare, to prepare individuals to find and keep a job and live as independently as possible. So this is a fact versus fiction conversation um, that will break down some of the misinformation that may discourage employers from hiring someone with a disability. So together, Bruce and Marcy will dive into why expanding your talent pool is great for your entire organization um, and here to provide you resources to get started. Um, this is going to be an interactive conversation, so please stay with us throughout this session. Your participation is really going to make this a well-rounded well workshop for all. So ask questions along the way, um, and there will be time for some Q&A at the end. So Bruce and Marcy, thank you so much for joining us, uh, and you're welcome to take it away. Great. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, Chris, and thank you everybody for attending this morning. Uh, it's nice to see a few familiar faces. Um, my name is Bruce Bach, and um, I work with uh, Vocational Rehab Services in Northeastern Minnesota, uh, working with placement and business engagement. Um, I uh, have a space in the Duluth Career Force um, on West First Street, and um, I'm going to introduce Marcy Jasper, who is also with the VRS. Yes, hi everyone, Marcy Jasper, Vocational Rehab Services. Um, I'm more out of the metro area and then I also cover kind of some central Minnesota, Stearns, Benton, those kind of counties around St. Cloud. Um, I like Bruce, am a program specialist in placement. So we assist individuals in finding employment, but then also assist businesses with hiring. Um, I've been with BRS for just over 19 years. So if we could just start by having all of you um, Put your name and where you are from in the chat. That would be great. We'll give you a minute to do that here. A really nice variety of services and entities here. Thank you all for being here. All right, are we ready to move on here? Well, we're here because we want to talk to you about increasing your diversity by hiring individuals with disability. And again, I always want to go back to the point of oftentimes it's an untapped workforce. And if a lot of businesses right now are having some challenges finding employees, we just want to expose you, give you some resources, talk a little bit about um, the importance of increasing your diversity um, by having folks with disabilities um, as your employees. So Marcy, you want to move ahead. There we go. Okay. So first of all, it's what is a disability? Um, the ADA has a definition, and it's basically someone with a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more of their major life activities, or a person who has a record of impairment, or someone who is regarded as having such an impairment. And that's a pretty broad generalization, but that's kind of what uh, most folks use as a basic definition. 
Uh, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 was quite a while ago, but what it did do is it found that people um, that have a disability is a, it's a natural part of a human experience and that no way diminishes the right of an individual to, to live independently, um, to have self-determination, to make choices in their life, um, to contribute to society, and to fulfill meaningful careers and enjoy full inclusion and integration in the economic, political, social, cultural, and educational mainstream of American society. And that act was the fundamental um, act of Congress that really moved things forward. And a lot of what we do is based on that act. So when you start thinking of what a disability is, we all probably have a, a mental image of someone who has a disability, but it's such a broad over lapping group of things. It can be someone with autism. It can be someone with epilepsy, uh, HIV AIDS, intellectual disabilities. There's a huge wide variety of folks that have disabilities. Some are visible, um, some are not. Uh, someone might have an anxiety disorder that you're not even aware of. So disability is really a large encompassing definition. Uh, major depression, um, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder is a disability obsessive compulsive disorder. There's a lot of things that qualify as a disability that, again, you might not see present when a candidate interviews for a position with you, um, or definitely wouldn't possibly know when someone fills out a resume or fills out an application for your place of business. So just jumping into some statistics, um, one in four people nationally have a disability. So as Bruce was kind of mentioning all those, a lot of times, um, people will think of disability as the physical ones, the people in a wheelchair, people that are blind, people that are deaf, but a big majority of people with disabilities um, are those hidden disabilities. Like you talked about the mental health disorders, the multiple sclerosis, the, think of fibromyalgia, lupus, like some of those that you would never know when you're probably sitting right next to somebody at work that has those. So um, really, you know, a lot of times in these, we ask, you know, how many people know a disability? And usually people do, but when you really think of it in these numbers, one in four is, um, you know, a lot when it comes to when you think of your workplace. Um, in the 2010 census, 56 million Americans disclosed. That number is obviously much higher right now. And also it's people that have disclosed. The 2020 census did not ask for our disability statistics, which we were kind of miffed about. So that's why we don't have any updated ones. Um, but we are looking probably more around 61 million Americans that have disclosed that they have at least one diagnosable disability. Key word there again is disclosed. Um, as many of you know, a lot of people don't disclose because of stigma, because they don't want to, because they don't have to. Um, you know, they don't need any sort of accommodations on the job. They don't want anybody to know. Um, so there's a lot of things around that disclosure. On um, the piece at the bottom, there's a significant portion of the 25% of the population with disabilities still remains either unemployed or underemployed. Uh, we just um, had a presentation yesterday and got some statistics that actually over COVID or over the last year, which was some really great news, is that people with disabilities actually increase their participation rate at a faster level than people without disabilities. So this last year has been really, really good for people with disabilities getting into the workforce. So that's some pretty encouraging news for us. Um, and a lot of times it's businesses like yourself that, that have worked with us, that have worked with somebody and given somebody an opportunity. So thank you for that. Now, just looking as far as Minnesota goes, um, we have 21.7% of adults in Minnesota that have some type of disability compared to the 25.6% the nationally that have the disability. Um, again, you know, as Bruce mentioned, there's a couple different um, um, topics of disability. And so when it really comes to people disclosing a disability, like for example, I think cancer was on that list. Some people wouldn't think cancer is a disability, um, whereas actually it really can be depending on what you come out of after, you know, after you are done with cancer, what, you know, what kind of limitations you have after that can definitely be considered a disability. So, so there's a lot of things on there, a lot of disabilities in there that people wouldn't think of as disabilities that, that are. So that number is probably a lot higher. So we want to take a little bit of time to break out into small groups. And a couple of things we really want to bring up are, what are you currently doing to increase diversity at your place of employment? Um, and what resources are you using? 
So we're going to break out into some small groups and have a chance to just kind of talk about that. We're going to ask that maybe one person from each group kind of uh, take a few notes, and we're going to share some of those ideas and topics of conversation when we reconvene. We'll give it another minute for Bruce and Marcy to pop back on. Welcome back. Yes, I think we have everybody back. Bruce, do you want me to? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, go ahead and we can just start if you want to open things up to conversation from the groups. Yeah, if any group wants to just jump in and talk about um, kind of what you guys discussed in your group. Hi, this is Jose Hi. with uh, Workforce Development. All oops. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I'll okay. just go ahead and get uh, say what we can. So we had some really great ideas in my group. For example, uh, one person contributed that working with different agencies such as Choice, Trillium or employment leaks, maintaining that contact, sharing job openings. Uh, we looked at, talked about uh, staff doing assessments or going to DEI training so they can develop their own uh, diversity competencies and look at the organization as well. Uh, we look, talked about looking at different ways to reach different communities that are out in our, uh, in our community, sharing what we know with others, and also looking at our organization for opportunities for employment for individuals with disability. Great, thank you. Go ahead, Nicole. I'll, I'll just join in. Actually, we talked about that as well. Um, the funny part was, is I am from UDAC, which we help people uh, find employment. And so was uh, another person in my group. So we uh, just, we had conversations about, you know, partnerships, choice, Trillium, employment links, and how that's really helpful. But then we also had conversations about how does, work employing somebody with a disability work within the HR standpoint do you, you know uh, there were some questions about do they need to be treated differently or not and so we had some really thoughtful conversations about how just you know even from that standpoint they should just be treated and respected like anybody else so yeah great you almost jumped into some of our next questions so that's you guys are moving forward and love it all right, another group. I think I'll just jump in for our group. One of the things that impressed me the most is the awareness of, you know, creating a culture of diversity. And I think a number of years ago, that probably wasn't as common. And yet everyone in our group had some portion of their, you know, organization that was committed to and looking into increasing the diversity of their workforce. So I think that that's really healthy. And I think it was exciting to hear that. there one more group? We talked about, sorry, we talked about in our group um, how you uh, connect with uh, the groups that do provide um, workers. And then we also talked about the shortage of job coaches. So that uh, can be an issue as well. Um, and um, we had actually, when I was at a previous job, we had actually used uh, Goodwill and um, they provided us with staff, which was um, another resource that before I had started at the job I was at, I did not realize that they actually, you know, had people that could come out to you. So we discussed, but yeah, the shortage in job coaches was one of our big things we talked about. 
Yeah, I think that's really true. I think that every sector of employment right now is affected by job shortages of some sort and um, entry level job coaches or, or seasoned job coaches um, are in a short supply, much like uh, caregivers and hospitality workers. And uh, so it's um, one of the things I just going to bring up that we try and work with is to um, some creative approaches uh, with working with a business where we might have someone say, okay, we don't have the ability to have a full-time job coach with this individual, but maybe we can provide some natural supports within that company. So the company then will maybe do a few little things and there are minor tweaks to make that individual successful. Yeah, and I think, you know, just, you know, we asked the question on resources, really just making sure if you guys have questions, if you know, around any of this is reaching out to, to Bruce and Nicole and all of these folks that um, that serve individuals with disabilities, we can always lead you in the right direction or help you find other resources. Um, you know, even just for looking for other staff is that you have the career force and you have the, the veterans agency and there's just a lot of different um, agencies that assist with helping you find um, diverse candidates. Obviously we're, we're more focused on the disability piece of it um, so we'd love to come and chat with you if, if, if you have any questions with that, but um, we can definitely help find resources if need be. And I'll just put another plug in, uh, Jose, with, uh, you know, Career Force and the city of Duluth. I mean, the agencies there are, are a great starting off point. Um, they can help businesses get connected with um, work uh, with the um, Minnesota Works and different places to get their jobs posted um, as well. Okay, we'll probably move on to our um, little next breakout session. And again, this is going to be a 10 minutes, and we just want to see um, how do you see hiring a person with a disability? How do you think would benefit your place of employment? And maybe just talk a little bit about. Um, what someone with that background and can bring to the diversity and also to just the overall general health of your staff and um, you know the vibrancy of your, your work community. And also about, we wanna talk about what concerns you have when it comes to hiring with someone with a, a disability. Um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions and maybe we can clear up a few of those, but I think it's important to, to at least acknowledge that a lot of HR folks and hiring managers you know, they've got some questions, whether they're, they're concerned about, you know, am I going to do something wrong and create a legal issue for my organization or how do I handle this type of thing? So that's kind of our focus of our next little breakout session. And we really want this conversation to be like, you know, we've closed the door and we want you guys to be able to talk openly in these rooms and really have those tough conversations. Because like we said, not only are me and Bruce available, but you have all the other agencies on here that can can assist too. So really just ask the questions and, and be vulnerable if um, if you do have concerns with this because we'd love to help walk this down. So we'll um, get separated into our rooms. Um, Marcy and Bruce, how long are you wanting this breakout room to be another 10 minutes or so? Yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and watch this. Welcome back. All right. Thanks, Chris. All right. Looks like everybody's back. All right. Who wants to jump in and talk about how do you see hiring a person with a disability would benefit your place of employment and the concerns that, that some of you guys had, some of the conversation you had? I can go first. Thanks, Becca. I'm from the YMCA and we mostly talked about um, the benefits to having people who have a disability work at our organization. Um, and we also noted that it's not only people who have a disability that you can see, but also other disabilities that are out there. So we also talked about how 
It can create a great image for your employer brand, for people with disabilities to be able to work at your organization, but also it's a feel good moment to be able to provide that opportunity for that person with a disability. One other that we noted was the YMCA has a lot of positions that work with children. So having those children see a person with a disability working in maybe a career that they want to do in the future or being able to help them in that position is really insightful as well. Um, some concerns we talked about had to do with job coach availability, like we mentioned before, and just working with either UDAC, Choice, Trillium, or other organizations on seeing what kind of support can be given for this position. Great, thanks, Becca. Who else wants to jump in? I'm I'll, willing to share Jose, if you- I'll go. Oh, we, go we had some, talked about the benefits and challenges. A couple of the benefits that we saw were uh, allowing our staff to become more compassionate and understanding being able to provide opportunities for individuals with disabilities to contribute kind of to society and just to get out and get to know other people. Also enhancing the work culture by bringing in different perspectives and also being able to have the, the organization reflect the community, both to employees and to customers being challenged in how we think about uh, individual disabilities and whether or not they can do certain jobs. Also challenges to hiring managers when determining whether or not they can hire somebody uh, based on their disability and whether or not they might be qualified to perform a particular. Great, thank you. Um, all right, Mary, you wanna jump in now? Sure. Trying to jump in early, thinking probably some of the ideas were the same, which I did notice. But um, we mostly uh, talked about the benefits. We didn't really get a chance to talk too much about concerns. But uh, one of the big, I guess, general topics was just how it increases your perspective. And in many different ways, perspective about how clients or your broader uh, work organization is maybe being encountered by those that have disabilities, perspectives around problem solving and creativity, bringing new and different ideas. Um, folks with disabilities have had to become very good problem solvers. And so that skill can really be um, utilized by the team and um, the other thing we talked about was the importance of being clear about expectations of job coaches and establishing a kind of a good communication uh, um, avenue about that uh, to make it go well. And really appreciated hearing about the JAN resource about reasonable accommodations that Bruce shared. And I think it's gonna be shared later on in the, in the program. Great, thanks, Mary. And is there one more group? I do have a, a story from a couple of years ago of a business um, that we had worked with for many years who was really open to hiring people with disabilities. Um, they had a, a, a crew of folks with um, who were deaf also working there. So they actually offered sign language classes and just did a whole bunch. They were, they were extremely diverse, not only in disability, but everything else too. They were a great company when it came to that. Um, and they came and did presentations for us and, and other businesses would ask them, you know, like, what were the benefits? And he said, you know, our productivity stayed the same. It didn't go down. It didn't go up. But where they saw the greatest value was um, the attitudes of people and attendance. Um, so people that had a, uh, that would occasionally call in sick kind of stopped doing that because, and they actually came to the management and they said, you know, I see this person coming in all the time and it takes them twice as long to get ready in the morning or their transportation takes longer. And so it's really got me thinking, like, why am I calling in when I shouldn't be? And so, um, so they actually said their their morale and their attendance kind of went through the roof, which was, which was really cool. Which is something, um, you know, numbers you can't measure, but 
it was great to see the company um, see that and their and their turnover rate went down because of it. So that was a really neat thing. Any last thoughts before we move on? All right, well, I think one of the things we've talked about challenges and we've talked about some of the issues, um, I think it's important and I think this is kind of why Marcy and I do our job is there are a lot of success stories out there. And I'm gonna share one locally and this is not his real name. Um, but I'm gonna use an example of Joe. And Joe was someone I worked with for probably a total of over four and a half years. Uh, Joe was someone who came into vocational rehab services, uh, realized that he had some abilities to, um, and an interest in engineering. So started out getting him a part-time job. He was enrolled in Lake Superior College. And, you know, it was not the smoothest process, but he completed a certificate in civil engineering technician. And he went on to work at an uh, agency, an uh, engineering firm in the Twin Cities. And, you know, he's someone who, when he first came in, if, when you first met him, if you had a, him to go through a job interview, you would have never thought, you know, you know, boy, where's this you know, young man going to go? And right now he's making, I think the last I heard, like 26 bucks an hour at a competitive wage, integrated employment job. He's been with this company now for almost two years. And he's getting great reviews. And it was so nice when he'd been there for a year and he got a hold of me and he says, well, when can I ask for a raise? And it was just so fulfilling to see how that can happen and finding the right fit. Here's a company, a very small engineering firm. They didn't have a lot of staff. Uh, they kind of, in their own way, they, they acted like they were taking a chance, but looking back, they realized it was really, really a great asset to have him working there, and he continues to work there, and I assume he'll be working there for some time or until he finds something, you know, a, a little more productive even for him to go into. So I think when you see people with disabilities and adding them into your workforce, there's a whole gamut of folks. It, it, it does, we certainly have a number of folks we work with that do white tables and help out in service business, but there are also a lot of professional level positions too. So that's the type of thing. And yet um, when Joe did a job interview, it was, you know, he had some barriers to making that eye contact and answering the questions, but you get him on the job and he's a civil engineering tech, he's outside in all types of weather and he's working with the engineers. And so I just like to share anytime I meet with a group of people, a good success story that lets you know that there are some great people out there getting good jobs and working as great employees. Great, thanks, Bruce. So we're gonna jump into two more success stories quick um, and they're both a little different. So that's why we wanted to share them, but they're both um, kind of out of the Metro. So we wanted to make sure of that too. Um, I'm gonna start with Ethan, because that's who I had up. <laughs> Living with a disability may seem difficult and you need lots of help, but Ethan has found that he was able to flip the script and help others now that he's working and contributing to society, working as a software engineer for the space program with a degree in aerospace engineering and mechanics. Hi, I'm Ethan. My job is as a software engineer in the Mission PLM program at Northrop Grumman Corporation. Essentially, we work to support another sector, the mission systems sector, to harmonize their engineering and manufacturing processes. Employment is important to me because it allows me to contribute and feel valued. It's sometimes difficult having a disability feeling like you're helping just because so many people help you. So being able to kind of flip the script and help other people by, uh, you know, writing programs or doing things like that. And it means so much to hear from my colleagues at work when they say that they're doing a good job or they really like something that they did. It really uh, makes me feel good about myself and that's why I love working so much. In regards to my disability or despite my disability, I've been able to make decisions and grow skills that allow me to remain productive regardless of the fact of having a disability. I have found a number of people through work that have become friends that I wouldn't have 
met them otherwise. Some people are more technical professionals being able to help me learn and increase my technical skills. And others just have similar interests and it's fun to just talk about nerdy things outside of work that we both have interests in. I have a myriad of different hobbies. I'm kind of a tinkerer by nature. That's probably the, the engineering aspect of me. I, I write computer programs all the time, play around and do things. I'm always tinkering with circuits. And probably one of my biggest creative hobbies is making music, electronic music. And actually this coupled well with my engineering background because when we learned about filters and things like that through my coursework, it applied directly to you know, sound synthesis and audio production. I achieved a degree of aerospace engineering and mechanics from the University of Minnesota. At the U of M, I, I participated in a number of different scientific student groups. Most notably, I was involved with the Minnesota Space Grant Consortium, which is a subset of NASA or funded by NASA for student engagement. I was involved in the rocket team as a member of their simulations sub team. And I also was involved with the University of Minnesota Small Satellite Research Lab. I found my job that I'm at now through Disability Inn's Global Conference and Expo, which takes place every summer. I met some recruiters there and got my name kind of in front of some people. And eventually that helped me to end up at where I'm at now. The target for me in terms of my uh, job is to eventually end up Somewhere in regards to orbital mechanics or launch vehicles, that's kind of the area of most interest for me. Um, there's just a lot of complicated physics and math and, and science and things that go into that, and it sounds like a really cutting edge thing, and being able to work on something like that would be really awesome. I do have a number of mentors, actually. I have had help from VRS. For example, they've helped me to mentor me on my job front in terms of you know, searching for employment and planning my career. And then I've also used Disability In, helping me to search for a job and, and prepare for interviews and to just better know how to navigate the workplace with a disability and to request accommodations. And then I've also had some industry professionals that I've been able to call upon to learn from about skills related to my actual career path. And then I use my parents and family and friends a lot in terms of helping me to make decisions about my life. All right, we're gonna stop that one there. You guys will get the links to these so you can watch the rest of it, but we have one more to show. Um, Ethan's actually from a very small town called Swanville, um, kind of in the center of the state if people know where that is. Um, and actually gets to work from home. So he is still up there. He would love to come down to the cities just for transportation purposes to get around and stuff, but he um, he has chosen to stay up in Squadville right now and can, can still work up there. So um, the first time I talked to him, he said words to me that um, I've never heard of. So I, I felt, <laughs> felt pretty great talking to him, but he really is gonna go places. So it's pretty neat. All right, let me get one more queued up here. Hi, I'm Brenda Myers, and we are at Meadow Ridge Farm in Pequot Lakes, Minnesota. And standing behind me are some horses and ponies, and they are part of the Sibley Equine Conservancy, which is located here at Meadow Ridge. Oops, sorry. Farm. My disability came about with a car accident in 1990, and I had a piece of the car impaled into my skull. And so I ended up with like 32 stitches through here and they had to take that out. Many years went by before I was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. And so it was like, during those years, it was like I would start jobs and, and, and not be able to do them. And so I ended up, you know, like in between jobs a lot. So um, from the Career Force Center, I was introduced to a vocational rehab counselor and um, she worked with me in connecting me to 
Once it was determined that what I wanted to do was start my own business, um, she connected me to the Small Business Development Center at Central Lakes College. There was, there was a lot of pieces and players of that went into this, so it wasn't like all happening overnight, and there was a lot of starts and stops and a lot of frustration. It didn't, it didn't go smoothly. You do need somebody in your corner um, that, that is encouraging you and helping you and um, kind of pointing you in the right direction, not necessarily doing things for you, but pointing you in the right direction of, of what you need to do next. And her encouragement um, was probably the primary reason why I kept moving ahead. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for watching those with us. Um, I had I was lucky enough to go out and and help film that with Brenda, and she was. She was awesome. It's just another avenue um, for people. And she said to me, she's like, after I just couldn't get up, continue to get up at nine o'clock every morning and get to a job, I finally realized I need to do things on my own time. And so when she really started researching, starting her own business. So um, another avenue that people with disabilities can do. All right, first I will pull this right. back up. Maybe. There we go. So a couple of things we just want to talk about. First of all, um, you can partner with DDRS. Some of the things that we can provide businesses with are listed. Um, recruitment, tours, job shadows. We can work with job, job tryouts and on-the-job training. Um, we can help you arrange for internships. Um, and again, we can provide disability resources, training, consultation, uh, connecting with youth. Those are just some of the services that DRS can offer um, businesses. Uh, here's a list of additional bite-sized learning. There's some great videos, short modules that your business can watch. Uh, they're on various subjects about working with folks with disabilities. The ADA um, is there, the uh, DEED, State Services for the Blind, uh, the STAR program, uh, technology. Um, there's a VRS. There's the work opportunity tax credit. There are tax credits out there available to businesses that hire folks that have some barriers to employment and disability is um, folks who work with VRS and disability are one of those um, subcategories. And then Jan, I think this is, I think, a go-to for so many businesses and for people in the industry, accommodation resources with the Job Accommodation Network. They've got such an easy, user-friendly website where you can just go in and really search a particular uh, disability and what you can do, possible solutions. It's um, something that we really recommend that any business is at least familiar with and checks out periodically. And again, um, I'm kind of running short on time, but uh, Martin, I can stay on if people have questions or uh, here's our contact information. You're going to get the PowerPoint. Again, I want to thank everybody for showing up today and being a part of this conversation. Uh, we really appreciate it. And hopefully you take away something that you didn't realize in the past by attending today. And I want to thank the chamber for allowing us to present as well today. Thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you, Marcy. Um, I know we're right at about noon, so if you need to hop off, I understand, but you're welcome to stay over if, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask um, either Marcy or Bruce, so feel free to do that. But thank you so much for attending. Thank you both for speaking. This was fantastic. Tons of resources that I'm really looking forward to sharing with the group here. So thanks again. Thank you.